So, so far we have VLAN 1, which is also known as the default VLAN. We've got VLAN 50 right here, which we named student, right? And this VLAN 50 is actually what we would call a data VLAN. So here I've got the types of VLANs over here. Default VLAN, data VLAN, right? and we created another VLAN. We created a VLAN for management at VLAN 99. So we've got a VLAN that we can use for management, let's say, at VLAN 99. And we've set that up to be, we named it management, and we're going to use it for management, and I'll talk about that in a second here. So we've got VLAN 1, VLAN 50, Right, and what we'll do is we'll pull out another PC, and this PC we'll put on the VLAN 99, which we're reserving for management. I'll just say MGT there, right? So I'll get a cable, straight through cable, I'll cable it to this PC, I'll cable it to the switch at the last port, let's say 24, for our manager, and I'm going to put this one on say 192.168.99.100. Notice how I'm making the networks match the number of the VLAN. Now you don't have to do that, but it's helpful in kind of remembering what you're doing, what VLAN you're on, will now correspond with the network number, right, of the network, and so that's helpful. And so what I'll do is take this PC and I'll set his IP address to be that. All right. So now this PC is going to be on the 99 network. Now we still have to assign that port on the switch to that VLAN. So what we'll do is we will do a conf t int, which is short for interface, fa 0 slash 24. Got to change that to a 0. And then I'll say sw tab switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN 99 okay now if we do a control C and then do a show VLAN you can see that there's the management VLAN VLAN 99 now port 24 is on it now our PC is on that port now What's important about the management VLAN is the management VLAN is the VLAN that, let's say, a manager or an administrator could remote into the switch to administer the switch or to manage the switch, right? So by remoting into the switch, what we mean is we mean possibly using Telnet Insecure or SSH to remotely manage the switch and that means the switch needs an IP address well since we have the VLAN 99 which is our management VLAN this is going to be the VLAN that we set up with an IP address so that this PC is able to communicate with the switch and remote into the switch so what we'll do is we'll click on the switch right now the switch doesn't have an IP address so you can't communicate with the switch so we'll say conf T to get to global config mode and we'll say int tab interface VLAN 99 and that puts us into interface VLAN 99. Now this interface is an interface for the VLAN 99 which is set up so that you can give the switch an IP address so that you can basically manage the switch. So now what we can do is now that we are in interface VLAN 99 which essentially is a virtual interface it's not a port on the switch. It's not an actual plug-in port. This is a, a virtual interface. And what we'll do is we'll say IP address. We'll say 192.168.99. And I'll say dot two since usually dot one is reserved for maybe a router or something like that. And I need to put a dot in between those. So I give it IP address, IP space, address space, 192.168.99.2 with a subnet mask, right? Then a no shutdown command, right? And now 
that interface has um, this virtual interface has an IP address and we'll be able to let's say communicate with the switch now let's take a look at our show running config and you'll see that at the bottom of the configuration file interface VLAN 1 is built in by default because VLAN 1 is the default VLAN and you can see it has no IP address and it was ready to go to take an IP address but it's considered um, uh, poor management to put the IP address on the default VLAN because let's say a hacker knows that VLAN 1 is the default VLAN and they know that a poorly managed switch might have an IP address on that default VLAN which every other computer is on let's say if they haven't managed the switch there so you probably want to put your IP address on a separate VLAN than the rest of the interfaces and a separate VLAN than the default VLAN making it a little bit harder to reach uh, to and therefore maybe to attack so you can see here interface VLAN 99 which we created and gave it an IP address and it's there now what we could do is we could try to ping that address and if we can ping that address we can probably telnet into it if we've configured the virtual telnet uh, virtual terminal lines that, that we could use for telnet so let's for just try to ping it first and we'll attempt to ping now okay we got a timeout but then we got replies right so we're able to um, communicate with 99.2 and why is that it's because we're 99.100 we're on the same network right we're on VLAN 99 and interface VLAN 99 has the IP address so this is a communication so now we've got the default VLAN covered which we know is VLAN 1 by default you can't get rid of it can't change the name you've got a data VLAN VLAN 50 which is used just for moving data for all your users connecting to the switch right we've got a management VLAN which is the VLAN that's going to have the IP address set on it right so we have the management VLAN so now what we need to talk about is the native VLAN and a voice VLAN now the CCNA curriculum barely talks about voice VLANs um, voice over IP and uh, voice VLANs are, are just barely addressed in the curriculum a little bit but um, the native VLAN in this chapter is a lot more important now native VLAN is important when we start talking about trunk ports right now these are all access ports they have VLANs on them but they're access ports one VLAN per port right when you talk about a trunk port you talk about a port that can carry multiple VLANs across one link and so that's what we're going to talk about next